Hello, welcome to a new video. If you're new around here, then my name is Katie and I'm a mixed media artist. I use mostly gouache, coloured pencils and, more importantly for this video, I use neocolours. So today I'm going to be talking a little bit more about them as a medium and answering some of your questions. I put a call out on my Instagram stories and I had quite a few, so I hope this video is really helpful. I'll be talking along while I show you the process of this piece, which I'm doing in my A5 Royal Talon sketchbook. And this is a Draw This In Your Style challenge that's by April, who goes by Monkey Mintaka online, and it's to celebrate her Instagram reaching 10k. April also has a YouTube channel, and I'll link both her Instagram and YouTube down below. But this was a really fun one to draw and definitely pushed me outside of my comfort zone with the colour palette. I've been using Neocolours more and more recently, and as there's a lot of blending and pure Neocolour process in this one, I thought it would be the perfect video to accompany my Q&A. I started using Neocolours a couple of years ago, and only used them as an extra layer on top of my paintings. I mostly use them to highlight or add on more texture on top, and mostly used them when the paintings were almost finished. It's only recently that I started using them solely for some drawings, and have realised just how versatile they can be. So let's start with the basics. I'm going to be talking about the Neocolour 2 pastels. There are two types of Neocolours by Karen Dash, the 1 and the 2. So the 1 is not water soluble, so they're more like the traditional crayon. Whereas the Neocolour 2s are water soluble wax pastels, and these are the ones that I'll be talking about today. I find them a lot softer and much easier to blend compared to the ones. So the first question I'm going to answer is, are they worth the price? And I think this would depend on how often you use them, because I do think they're quite a pricey art material. I'm lucky enough to have received the big set of 40 for my birthday, but there are some colours in there that I don't tend to reach for. So if you want to try them out, they are sold individually in most art stores that I've visited, and I think buying them like that and creating your own little palette is a much better way to test them and also see if they're worth the price for you. I've bought quite a few loose ones now to top up my bigger tin, and I use those ones a lot more than say the reds or purples because I chose natural colours like greens, browns and ochres because I do so many nature inspired paintings. Actually this sketchbook spread is one of the only times I use so many of the blue and purple shades. One of the questions I got, and have gotten quite a few times on any of the pieces I've shared on Instagram when I've been using Neocolours, is how do I make the textures and the blending so smooth? And I'm hoping this video will help answer that in an easy way so you can see what it is exactly that I'm doing. But the easy answer is simply to go over the area with more colour. You can see that I like to use a lot of shades, and I'm constantly putting down and picking up new colours of pastels. I do small areas with lots of different colours, so I'm constantly swapping and changing, but I'm also keeping the marks quite solid and opaque. I do press quite hard as well, which has definitely caused some of my Neo colours to snap because I've been too heavy handed, so definitely something to bear in mind when you're using them, because they're not super strong and they can be snapped quite easily. And then I blend the little areas of colour together with more lines over the top and I go around some of the colours to blend them in and make them smoother. So here's an example of blending them together in my sketchbook, both dry and wet. Because they're water soluble, you can use them in place of paint, but most of the time I tend to use them dry. They are really pigmented when wet though, and so they're definitely a great versatile medium because of that, and you can kind of use them as paint. I'm just using a wet paintbrush here to blend the two colours together and you can see what a lovely, really soft gradient you can get just by using the water over the top. Another question I get asked is, how do I get such precise lines? I've been asked a couple of times if I sharpen the pastels, and I don't. I was tempted, but I feel like it's such a waste seeing the pastel just losing so much simply to get a sharp point. So I keep them stumpy. And when I look in my tin, you can definitely see which ones I reach for the most, and which ones I don't, because some of them are still sharp from when they arrived. 
I don't find it too tricky to get the precise lines with these anyway, but for even neater or thinner lines I use the edge of the pastel. It can take a bit of practice, but if you angle the pastel, you can definitely be more precise with where it goes. Sometimes I also use the wrong end, which wasn't sharpened when it came, and that gives really neat lines because it's such a sharp edge on the actual pastel. And you can get pastel sharpeners if you want to use them that way, but I think the fun of Neocolors definitely comes from the texture it can give by using the stumpy blunt ones. But for the tiny details, like with the eye on this rook, I did the main bulk of it in the black neo colour because it gives such a nice opaque black, and then I neatened up the edges with a black coloured pencil. Can you layer them on top of other media like acrylic or gouache? So I didn't try acrylic here in this sketchbook, but I've definitely layered them over acrylic before. Here's what happens if I add neo colour over a gouache swatch and vice versa. The first one layers really nicely and you still get some of the neo colour texture coming through. And I love using them in this way. It definitely gives a full colour finish because the gouache is underneath. And if you use neo colours straight on the page, you're more likely to see the paper unless you layer them a lot. And then the right is the gouache over the neo colour, which is more tricky. Because gouache is also water soluble, a wet paintbrush picks up the neo colour as well. So although gouache is very opaque usually, it was hard not to merge the layers because it wants to mix together. I don't ever tend to use them in this order. If I mix the two it's always gouache first, but you can definitely see you can get really nice gradients in this way as well. In these swatches I've shown how it layers with pencil and compared it to the gouache. So you can see the pencil layers really nicely over gouache, but it doesn't over the dry near colour. It really loses the pencil colour and actually, because they are wax based, you can see it actually picks up the pigment instead and kind of dug in and scratched into the pigment. It definitely fares slightly better over the wet near colour pastels because obviously we've mixed them with water, but you can see in the middle of the swatch that it definitely struggles still and that's where the near colour was most dense. If you're using Neocolor 2s on a mixed media piece, I really recommend using them as the final layer, unless you want to use them with water and mix them like paint on the page. Pencils don't layer over the top, so unless you want to layer on more Neocolors, it kind of has to be the final details. You can also see here where I've done it the other way around, so I did pencil first, and then you can see where I've put gouache over the top, and then Neocolor over the top. And it definitely fares better doing it this way around. And what was more interesting to me was seeing how the Neo Color changed color. It kind of became a purple over the pink, which I thought was really interesting. So definitely a lot to experiment with and try using it in the different layers and seeing what works better for your practice. Obviously with this sketchbook piece, the bird is only done in Neo Colors. So I could just layer them on top of each other but I couldn't then layer on a new layer over this with pencils because it just wouldn't do anything and would probably just mark it and dent it and ruin the smooth finish. So linking to that question was another one that I received which asked if you can scrape it off if you make a mistake. So you saw it does take off a little bit of the pigment with a pencil and so I tried it with a little craft knife as well but the pigment is very fixed on the paper despite having that waxiness feel on top. I find it much more forgiving if you put near colour over gouache because you can use a paintbrush to wet it and dilute it and then layer over it again. But if you just use the near colour, you're not going to get that pigment back up. If you make a mistake, I'd just recommend using more layers or maybe blending it with another near colour shade if it's the wrong colour. I use a lot of scrap paper in between some pages in my sketchbook and the reason for that generally is because of near colours. I find without the paper in between the pages, if I work on the other side of a page that has a lot of them on, they transfer from the pressure. And it can result in quite dirty spreads and it definitely muddies the artwork sometimes. So I tend to just use the scraps in my sketchbook, but I also use a pastel fixative spray for larger works 
like the Neo Color Heavy pieces I did for Folktale Week. So here are some swatches I've done so you can see how it reacts to smudging, water, and then I'll spray the bottom one with the fixative. I'm also showing you how the spray works on gouache with Neo Color over the top. So this is a spray I bought from Jackson's and I've covered up the swatches I don't want to be sprayed with the fixative. Obviously I should point out that you should definitely do this outside and when I spray my pieces I always do it in my garden. It's also recommended to do a couple of layers but I just do a single one here to see how it goes. So here's what happens if I now smudge the fixed one with my finger. A bit of the colour is transferred but not as much as before and it's the same with the gouache and near colour over the top. Compared to me putting water over the near colour on gouache on the unfixed swatch, you can really see the difference. If I then add water over the top with a paintbrush, it only smudges it a little bit and I think that's probably because I only did the one layer of fixative and it looks like it didn't cover it fully. So if you are worried about the smudging, I really recommend using a fixative spray. I have an affiliate code with Jackson's now, so I've linked the spray and the Neo Colors down below with an affiliate link. That just means that you don't have to pay any extra money or anything, but if you do decide to buy from these links then I'll get a small kickback in return. And then my final question is from April, who's draw this in your style this is, and she asked which is my favourite colour. So it's definitely a tricky one because I definitely have a top view. But if I had to pick just one, I'd go with Light Olive. And sadly, this is one of the ones I have snapped um, because I love using it for all my nature-inspired pieces and I definitely get heavy-handed with the texture. I think this one has somehow made its way onto practically all of my mixed media landscapes, but it's just a really nice green shade and perfect for trees and grass. I think it pairs really nicely with the olive shade and those would be the two that will 100% be found in my pencil case if I go on a plain air drawing session. So those are all the questions and like I said at the beginning this was definitely out of my comfort zone because I used pastel colours for the background so I think it gives a really fairy tale and ethereal look. But it was a really nice way to mix something which I'm really comfortable with drawing like birds with something which I'm not so comfortable with, like the colours. And I really hope that this video has been helpful and inspired you to try new colours. I know they can be a bit daunting at first because they're quite different to a wax crayon which we might all be used to, but I've definitely found my confidence has grown the more I use them. I definitely recommend experimenting yourself and seeing which way works best for you. I really hope you enjoyed watching this video, if you enjoyed it or found some use out of it please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thank you so much for making it to the end and I'll see you soon with a new video. See you later!